Hi, my name's Sam and I'm the service manager at SciTech Australia. I hope you are all keeping safe amongst COVID-19 and keeping plenty of hand sanitizer ready, just like we are. Today, I'm gonna to be talking to you about diaphragm pumps. Now, these pumps are one of the most commonly used uh, in the industry, and we see plenty of them in the service department. Um, they're quite easy to service if you know what you're doing. So today, I'm gonna to give you a few tips about servicing them, as well as just going through the different types of pumps you're likely to see in your lab. So a diaphragm pump is very much like your car engine. It essentially has a reciprocating piston, which then pulls air in or other gases in and then pushes it out through the exhaust. Here I've got a cutaway model, which helpfully shows us how this all works. So down here, you've got your inlet diaphragm, your inlet um, valve, and then your exhaust valve behind here. These valves are essentially one-way valves, so they will only let gas flow through in one direction. So in a pumping cycle, the diaphragm will pull in, it will pull gas through the inlet, through this inlet valve, and then it will reciprocate back upwards, at which point the inlet valve will now be closed and then the gas will pass through to the exhaust. Like a car engine as well, you can have multiples of these diaphragms in order to improve pumping speed as well as ultimate vacuum performance. Now diaphragm pumps typically come in two distinct types. You've got your chemistry um, rated diaphragm and your non-chemistry rated diaphragm. Now these two are the same shape and same size, but the chemistry one has got a PTFE coating on it. In addition to that, chemistry series pumps also have a polymer coated lining on the inside, which stops it from being attacked by chemicals and solvents. Whereas the non-chemistry, as you can see here, is just raw aluminium, so it would be subject to attack. Now these two different types of diaphragm pumps have two uh, very different applications that they can be used for. The non-chemistry diaphragms are best used in applications where they're not likely to see solvents or high levels of moisture, for instance, backing turbo pumps, um, and also for, um, for uh, vacuum storage um, and for just clean chamber applications like space chambers. Now your chemistry rated diaphragms, they are well suited for working with rotary evaporators, for uh, filtration systems, for solvent purification systems, um, anywhere where they're likely to see high levels of moisture or uh, chemicals. So based on the fact that you're watching this video, I'm going to assume that you've got plenty of diaphragm pumps in your lab. One of the most commonly asked questions I get is, why is my vacuum pump not pulling down the way it was when I bought it new? What can I do to keep the performance going? So here are a couple of tips that I've got that'll help you make sure that your vacuum brand pumps continue to work as well as they were on the day that you bought them. Inlet traps are a helpful addition to your diaphragm pump, particularly if you're using it with chemistry. As you can see here from this PC3001 Vario, the inlet trap is essentially a glass flask that sits on the inlet. Now what this does is that it traps any liquids or particles that might make their way through and into the pump. This stops the pump from getting damaged by liquids and particle ingress, and also it improves the efficiency of the pump, as it means that the pump doesn't have to push through liquids and can just focus on pushing through the gases. Thereby, it is able to reach its ultimate vacuum much more quickly. Now, one commonly overlooked item which often causes issues with diaphragm pumps is the exhaust tubing. If your exhaust tubing gets blocked either by contamination or just by a simple kink in the line, this can cause undue stress to the rest of the pumping system, damaging diaphragms and possibly even tearing um, valves. So it's always worth inspecting your vacuum lines periodically to make sure that there is no blockage on the exhaust, and this will help your pump work at its best efficiency. Now I know it's tempting to go in, turn on your rotary evaporator and start running your pump straight away, but one really important thing that you should always do is to run your vacuum pump for at least 30 minutes prior to starting your application. What this does is that it warms up all the internal surfaces of the pump, which means that chemical vapors are less likely to condense on the surfaces and damage the surfaces. Additionally, if you run the pump for 30 minutes after your application, this will have a self-cleaning effect and therefore also help remove anything that might have ended up inside the pump. Diaphragm pumps, like your car, require regular maintenance and inspection to ensure that they can continue performing at their best. 
Now I know it's very easy to just ignore them, leave them underneath your fume hoods, leave them underneath your benches, and assume that they'll run forever generating infinite vacuum. But what actually happens is that they break down and allow solvents and chemicals to leach into the spaces in here, which can cause irreversible damage to your pump. It's always important to have a vacuum gauge, as this is the easiest way to determine how healthy your vacuum pump is. Now with all the vacuum brand diaphragm pumps, they will have a label on the front of them, like here, and over here, which will show you what the specification is for the ultimate vacuum. The easiest thing to do is to connect up your vacuum gauge onto the inlet of the pump, run the pump, and see if it is able to reach its ultimate vacuum. If it can't reach this ultimate vacuum, then it means that you've got a problem and that you need to address it as soon as possible. So your pump isn't reaching ultimate vacuum. What can you do? Well, I can sell you a new pump, but that's probably not the most economical way to go about spending your lab's money. Now, firstly, we need to identify what could cause the lack of performance. And this is usually generated by a few things. One, tears in your diaphragm. Two, torn valve. Three, blockages in your vacuum connections and vacuum lines. Well, four, your pump is simply just dirty on the inside, which, uh, which fills up the headspace and causes the pump not to work efficiently. Now we finally reached the part of the video which I'm guessing is why you started watching in the first place. How do you service your diaphragm pump? Servicing diaphragm pumps is not particularly complicated. It just takes a little bit of time and patience and a couple of the tools. For starters, you'll need a diaphragm wrench. Now this goes around the outside of the backing plate of the diaphragm and allows you to remove it from the head. Now they come in both a metal type for the larger pumps and a plastic version for the smaller pumps. Other tools that you might need are the Allen key and also some lint-free towels and some scotch brite. On the older style pumps, at this point you'll need to remove the vacuum fittings in order to give you access to the valves. Now it's always important to keep an eye track of which fitting came from where. When those fittings are off, you can remove the cover and then you can separate the two plates of the head. As you can see here, this is a pump that is requiring service. You can see the valves are used and you can see that they've actually deformed quite significantly. Once you've removed the valves, you can give the entire service here a clean with some isopropanol. Now, it's best to start off by using just a paper towel to wipe it off and only when you go to a point where you've got hard deposits, then to use the scotch bright. It's important to use the scotch bright gently because you do not want to damage the surfaces. Now a common area for deposits is on the inside face of the head. Now this is the face which makes contact with the diaphragm. So you can see from this one that you get a lot of residue on the inside face. One other thing to also check is that these inlet and exhaust ports are clear and free from any debris. One thing to remember when you're cleaning the pump, particularly if it's really dirty and you need to get this at it with a scotch bride, is this slight ridge you see on the outside ring of the head. This ridge is actually what clamps onto the diaphragm and causes and creates the vacuum seal. So when you're trying to clean this area, make sure you do not damage that or polish that area too much, otherwise your pump will leak and it won't be able to achieve its ultimate vacuum. Once you've got the tool engaged in the backing plate of the diaphragm, you can rotate counterclockwise. When you have it off, just ensure that you retain the spaces. Most pumps will have at least one or two of these very thin spaces to allow it the adjustment of the clearance of the diaphragm to the head. Now that you have the diaphragm off the pump, including the spacer, you can remove it 
by taking the spacer off. Now these are unique, so you need to keep track of how many are behind each head. Then you need to remove the backing plate. And then you can take the diaphragm off. And then you've got the clamping disc as well. Now after you've given all these parts a good clean, grab your new diaphragm and put it back on. Noticing that it's got a square cutaway that matches with a square block here. Clamping disc then goes on so that it all mates nice and flush. And then do not forget your spacer. And then you can screw this back onto the con rod. What can sometimes help is if you put a dab of isopropanol or ethanol, as this will help to keep the spacer in place while you're screwing it back onto the con rod. When screwing this back on the con rod, you can start it off by hand but then you can do the final tighten using the tool, similar like when you're undoing it. Now, when installing your valves, you need to make sure that the tab on the valve is aligned correctly with the seat. When you're installing these, you want to make sure that that flat tab is away from the opening. You've got the opening there, you want to make sure it's away from it, as this will protect it from damage. The valves need to be seated on that inner ring, like thus, and with this plate there is an alignment pin which allows you to make sure that it sits in the right position. What you can also do is put a small drop of isopropanol on the valve which will also stop it from moving around as you're reinstalling it back onto the diaphragm pump. Now once you've got your head completed, it's important when you're putting the head bolts back on that you tighten them evenly. Don't just tighten one side at a time because otherwise you can cause a levering force which can damage the pump.
Now, once you've got one head completed, it's always tempting to just move on to the next head so you can get the pump finished. But I find it's actually best to test the pump one head at a time. That way you know that if one of your valves has been put on the wrong way or it's slipped out, that you can address it straight away. If you do your entire pump, particularly if it's a pump with eight heads or four heads, then you'll need to go back through each stage to try to determine which stage is the one that's causing you the issues. Now occasionally, after you service a pump, you can encounter two issues. One, the ultimate vacuum just doesn't seem to get better no matter what you do, and that can be possibly caused by an incorrect spacing of the shims. Occasionally, because of variations in tolerance, you may need to add more shims in to in order to achieve ultimate vacuum. Another issue that people sometimes find after servicing their diaphragm pump is that it walks all over the table by itself. And this is caused by head knock, where the diaphragm is actually making physical contact with the head and causing excessive vibration. What needs to happen there is that we need to identify which head is responsible for the vibration and then remove some spaces in order to give it, um, in order to stop the valve, the, the diaphragm from hitting the head. Now that brings us to the end of this video. I hope it's been informative and that you can now see that servicing a diaphragm pump isn't particularly complex, it just takes some time and some patience to make sure that you go through each of the steps very carefully. Of course, SciTech is always here to support you in your service needs, so feel free to give us a call on 1800 023 467 or email us at service at scitech.com.au. Now for the month of May, we are happy to offer a 25% discount on all vacuum brand diaphragm kits as well as on diaphragm pump services. So if you have any pumps that you need to get serviced, now's the best time to get them serviced as we have plenty of stock and our service engineers are happy to do the work for you.